Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is another thermal imaging camera. Unlike all the other ones I have reviewed so far on this channel, this one appears to be positioned towards electronics and laboratory use, as you can see from the integrated stand here. The unit was provided to me by Banggood, and it is sold under the AV2 top brand name. And the one I have here is the T220 Pro, which by the way also comes with a macro lens, which we'll take a look shortly. As usual, I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. The thermal camera came in this rather generic product box. All it says here is thermal imaging analyzer, and there's nothing else except for some basic product description. You can see that, but nowhere is the tool top brand to be found on this box. It does come with a product manual, but it also didn't say anything about the brand name tool top either. I know I might sound like a broken record, but a lot of these Chinese products are essentially the same, but sold under different brand names. So I wouldn't be surprised if you find an identical one under another brand name. Anyway, the thermal resolution is specified at 256 by 192, which is the sweet spot these days. But I can't find any NETD specifications, so we'll have to see subjectively what the thermal noise situation is like later on. Its price tag is at around $235 at the time of this recording, and that actually is quite reasonable considering what is included in the package. You get this nice adjustable aluminum stand, which also has a holder for your cell phone in case you are wondering what that flap is up here. So this is actually where you put your cell phone, it's not a screen. And this is the imaging sensor. Now, because it's meant for electronics, the bottom is actually padded with a layer of rubber material, which is a nice touch, as otherwise the electronic circuitry would be shorted by the metal surface. Now, that got me thinking, is this rubber mat ESD safe? I don't know, let me check it with my static field meter. And here is my static field meter. Many people have seen me using this in my other videos. Let me pour it on. And you can see this lights, by the way, here are the guide to show you the correct distance. And when you are at right distance, the two lights converges. So you can see that right now, for example, we're measuring the surface charge of this ESD safe mat. And you can see that we're not seeing any readings, even though I'm rubbing the mat here because this is grounded. Of course, we can always calibrate it by press and hold. So now we zeroed it out. Anyway, that's how you would use this static field meter. So let's move it on to this rubber pad here. And you can see we're already seeing some residual charge here. As you can see, I'm rubbing the rubber mat here, and it doesn't really build up that significantly. So that's actually a good sign. This is excellent, as the last thing won't happen is the mat generates some static electricity and damage your components here. Of course, if you really wanted to be sure, you probably would want to ground the stand itself and definitely not try to move around the electronics while using this stand. Now, let me turn it to its side so you can see how this one works. Now, my camera seems to be doing something funny. This is actually a straight up stand, but it looks like it's leaning backward. Anyway, so you can adjust using this thumb screw the distance between the camera and your surface, and that is useful when you are putting on a macro lens. And speaking of macro lens, here is the one supplied with the unit here. You can see it is a very good quality one. Let me carefully take it out. And the macro lens can be attached to the lens via these keys and lock in place. Let me show you here. So it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see we have these holes and these need to be aligned with the keys here and we twist it is locked in place and you can see that's how you attach the macro lens you'll have to visually align the keys to the slots on the camera but you'll get a hang of it in no time speaking of the thermal camera i forgot to mention that you can actually remove it from the stand you see here we have this thumb screw here. Now you will have to use an Allen key for this because there's just not enough space around the screw to do it by hand. So let me actually take the camera off and show you. And here is our thermal camera. I just took off the stand. You can see it is very nicely constructed. Everything is in this 
by the look of it, a single piece of uh, machined aluminum, and probably the back is screwed on. This is very nice construction, as the thick aluminum case can serve as a heat sink as well, so that will improve the thermal camera performance. And here is the macro lens, and you can see the mounting mechanism here. So basically we insert the key into the slots, and I twist it. Now it is made it onto the camera itself. And in case you wondered, the Allen key used is 3 16th of an inch. And by the way, there are actually two models of this camera, the T220 and the T220 Pro. I believe only the Pro version comes with a macro lens. And if I were to buy one, I would definitely buy the Pro version with a macro lens. As for working with the small components on circuit boards, the macro lens is definitely a must-have. In the product box, you also get a couple of cables. One short one is a USB-C to USB-C. This is for connecting to your phone. The other one is for connecting to your computer. You also get a USB thumb drive preloaded with the software, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. And here is the case for the macro lens. The software you use is called Infrared Thermal Imager and is on Google Play Store. I have already downloaded and installed it. So let's take a look here. And I should just be able to connect. Using a cable here. And I will power it on. And you can see that it already recognized it and is initializing. It does take a few seconds the first time, but it's relatively quick. And occasionally, you do hear the shutter clicking sound, and that is a normal calibration. And right now, I have an Arduino board at the bottom here. You can see the image is actually the quality is excellent here, and you can also see my hand. It is very crisp and nice. We know that nowadays a lot of high quality thermal imaging sensors are made by Infi-Ray. So I'm wondering if this thermal camera is actually using an Infi-Ray sensor. I guess one way to find out is if we can use Infi-Ray's app with this thermal camera. And that would give us some clue at least. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to use the P2 Pro app. And that's the one supplied with one of my Infi-Ray cameras. So let's try that. Yes. Aha! Yes, we can. So at the very least, the protocol of the sensor used is compatible to InfiRays. And there's a high likelihood that the imaging sensor itself is actually made by InfiRay, as they are one of the main players in the thermal imaging sensor market. So that's good to know. Let's change it back to the app supplied, and we'll take a look at the app. Let me move it closer. So let's briefly look at the software here. So you can see we have the setting. Let's see what the setting does. OK, so you can change the language, temperature tracking, whatnot. That's good. And what is this? Oh, this is set the temperature alarm. And we can take a picture, obviously. And we can also record a video, I assume. So let's record a video here. And move it around. And let's stop it to see if we got the video here. Yep, we got the video and also the image we took earlier. That's good. And here you can see we can change the color palette. So let's give it a try. And you can see that, no problem. It's very responsive. And I definitely like the default one. And of course, we can do some measurement. You can measure along the line. Or let's reset it. Or you can measure it in this box, I assume. Yep. It tells you what is the hottest spot, what is the coldest spot within the box that is identified here. That is very nice. What else here? We can zoom in. OK, so this is probably zoom into a region here. Yep. And we can, let's see, what is this? OK, we can flip the images here. That's good. We can also, ah, this is actually nice. We can define a temperature region here. You can see that so that it tells you what part of the image falls within this thermal range. 
And by the way, according to the manual, the optimal focusing distance without the macro lens is between 10 to 15 centimeters. So let's take a look here. Right now, we're at about 12 centimeters, as you can see here. So we can actually lower it a little bit, so we can probably see better. Let's uh, reset it. And yep, so you can see right now it's right around 10 centimeters, and we can see the image more clearly. And of course, if we started to lower it more, you will see that the image becomes blurred. But let me put on the macro lens and we'll take a look again. Now the macro lens is on. Check this out. It's actually quite impressive. Look at the details we can see here. By the way, this is actually the lowest setting in height. And that just happens to be three centimeters. So I assume they actually build this so that you don't have to shift the standard round when using macro lens. You can just drop it to lowest distance and it will automatically work. You can see how clearly we can see these pins and the components on the board here. I'll definitely take a few pictures and show you. Of course, if you want to focus on some components that are a little bit higher, you do need to adjust the stand a little bit, as the focal distance of this camera with the macro lens on is very narrow. As I mentioned earlier, this thermal imaging camera also comes with desktop software. It appears that the software supports multiple devices, and I had to choose the CA-09D for the T220 Pro. The CA-09B option doesn't really work. It would be nice if the device can be recognized automatically, but it's fairly easy to figure out. And the software is actually quite useful. You get the live view of the camera just like you would with your phone. And you can also record live images and videos and do some analysis. With the desktop software, you get all the features that the mobile software provides and some more. You might have noticed that the product name actually has a 3D in there. I actually didn't know why. And I think now I know why, because you can see here the desktop software has this capability to show you the image distribution in 3D view. Now, it seems to me that's really just a gimmick. Anyway, I actually really like this AV2 Top T220 Pro thermal imaging camera. The integrated stand really makes a big difference in terms of usability. Now, you could use a tripod mount like what I have here with Infrared T2S Plus. But this setup is not as elegant as a dedicated stand like what we have here. Also, the PC software is actually very useful. So you do have the option of using the T220 Pro with either PC or your cell phone. The thermal image quality is also very good. Overall, I think if you wanted a dedicated PC inspection thermal camera setup, this T220 Pro could just be what you are looking for. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you next time.